and we have 10, 10 internal card slots. Two wallets from Slimfold, the original and the micro. They're both bifolds. Let's get these open. Comes in a nice OPT bag, some information on the back. Get this micro going. Same situation here. Let's get it out to look at. All right, well, we've seen these before. They're quite nice. Very, very spacious in what we get with the original. And the micro, well, it's a micro. It's kind of a smaller version of this. We'll look at what all this means here on the interior. And I'm sure you can kind of guess, but well, let's go. There's also a third member of the soft shell team called the Nano. It's a bit smaller than the micro for those who are truly ultra minimalist. The original comes in five RFID capable colors and two non RFID blocking colors. Very similar option with the micro. So let's look at the features on the original. One internal card slot or ID slot right here. You can see that. And we have 10, 10 internal card slots. Two, four, six, eight, and 10. Four more on the interior, which is the billfold pocket area right here. And it is very, very spacious as we can tell. Now, if we look at the micro, very similar situation. We open it up a little smaller. We have an ID slot right here as well as three internal card slots. One, two, and really you can count the third one right here, I guess. So it really has three and one billfold pocket right in here. For a measurement perspective on both of these, you can see this here and you can see the weight difference. I mean, that's what's substantial between these two. And of course, outside of just the footprint of the size, you can see that uh, it's a very lightweight material across the board. All right, y'all know what's coming up next. For the original, the company recommends up to 20 cards. I got 10 in there plus five slips of cash. Notice that we had very, very tall currencies like uh, the yen and the euro, and they fit just fine and with some space to spare. If we go to the micro, I put six cards in here, including that uh, ID, and I had uh, currency that also had taller currency. If you can see how it works with just US dollars, well, okay, with the taller currencies, it still worked just fine, just barely. But if you take out some of these foreign currency pieces from the US, so you're dealing with a US centric type approach. Uh, you have plenty of space here. It looks and operates just fine. Both are designed and made in the United States, right? So that's pretty important here. It's specially designed super strong blended synthetic ultra weave densities that on this leaves soft but incredibly durable. So, I mean, really durable, it's soft, it is flexible as you can kind of see, but uh, this will last a super long time. The wallet is also sewn in all the right places. So this wallet could bend a bit more like this if you really wanted to push it to make it a little bit smaller instead of such a, a wide bifold. But we can see how it's sewn on all the edges right here. We can see how it's sewn in the middle and this is really for separation. And you can see in the middle crease in the fold there, uh, it is sewn that we have three different lines of thread there. This is not going anywhere. And with the micro, we can kind of see the same kind of benefit that we have by way of its threading. It's a little bit different color here. I think it's gray, which I like, but uh, very much the same. Non-obtrusive, but looks really good. Now, both of them are made from a single piece of material that's then folded up folded down and sewn on the sides. And so you're not dealing with a lot of different pieces to contend with and sewing is really to keep the, the whole thing into place. Now that long description of the material I, I gave you, uh, just think of this as a cross between Gore-Tex and Kevlar with it being waterproof and even machine washable. Not so sure about your contents if this gets into the washing machine, but the wallet will be just fine. And the pockets are precision cut. This is done through a laser and you can see it now. Of course the concern is, well, can this tear from one to the other. And honestly, I'm pulling on this pretty hard and it's not tearing. I don't know over time if this will cut away at that, not quite sure, but there are people who've owned these wallets for many, many years and have had no issues with them. Now, without some kind of support in the wallet, 
this would be very, very, well, you could fold it up into all kinds of different ways. And so it needs some level of rigidity that you do get from the cards and things that you put in here, but they've also built into this, this framework in the back. And to get you a, a view of this, right here is this aluminum. And it's a, an aluminum material which provides RFID protection, but it also provides a level of rigidity for the wallet so it can maintain its shape. Now it's a little easier to see on the micro. So let's pull this out. Let's get a view. And you can actually see that material right here. We can actually pull this up in the back and get an even closer view of what this is. So RFID is an option. So if you don't want the option of this material here, then you get this plastic in front of it right here. That's what gives the rigidity without this RFID, essentially aluminum foil in the back. So that's how that gives you RFID capabilities. Again, not a fan of the ID windows being made of plastic. I've never, these generally go bad before the wallet goes bad. And seriously, 99% of the time when I'm asked for my ID, they require me to pull it out of the wallet. That said, if we look at a pricing perspective, the original is priced for $56 with the micro being 53. Now, usability wise, this comes with a five year warranty, which is impressive. The texture of the material provides a comfort grip without being too rough. So, I mean, you know, you can see how it provides just very little pressure. It's got enough tactile tooth to it, but it's not rough. I just, I, I really like that, uh, that balance. Access to everything is really easy. High level of confidence in that it can hold things as well as uh, maintain them uh, over time and getting to your cards is really fairly easy. The only concern that I had is this overlapping right here of slots doesn't give you a walk down. It's actually, it lines them all up. It's the same problem that we have with these slots here. They all line up towards the top. And so you do have to do a bit of digging between the two slots to get what you want. You have to kind of know where they're at. It's not just an easy, I see corners up here I can flip out with my thumb and gain access to. Other than that, not bad. I'm pretty impressed. I like this wallet quite a bit. Now onto the final score. From a final score perspective, they are ranked just a little different. So we'll do the original first. Quality of four, price of three. I'm on the fence a bit, as I believe the price is on the upper end of reasonable, but with everything made onshore in the United States, that, that works for me. Features of three, usability of four, despite the overlapping cards, and perception of four. I love that it's made in the United States and consists of uniquely designed materials. So that gives this wallet a score of 3.7 out of five. Now, if we take a look at the micro, it's a quality of three. I'll show you why. It's, it really comes back into how this is all laid out. As a matter of fact, it just you know, folded up there. It's just not as well secured in my mind as the original was. And so that's why I gave it a three. Price of three, same situation. Features of three, usability of four, and perception of four. That overall gave us a score for the micro at 3.4 out of five. If you like this video, what we were reviewing there, then take a look at this one next. I think you'll like it. And we'll see you in the next review. Bye.